So the biggest names in AI just admitted that they're wrong, and it's happening faster than anybody expected. So we're watching prediction after prediction crumble in real time. So from MIT pioneers claiming AI would be human level by 1983, to Sam Altman flip-flopping from we know how to build AGI to the bubble is going to burst in less than six months. So did you catch the Dario Amati's um, March prediction that AI would write all code within 12 months? Well, that aged like milk in Phoenix heat. So why are the same people who hype these technologies now backpedaling faster than they can handle? What did they? What went spectacularly wrong with this? Let's dive into some of this today. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for our companies. With over a decade of, of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so these AI predictions didn't just kind of miss the mark by a degree or two. They completely fa fa face planted. And here's the kicker. The exact people that made these bold claims are now quietly walking them back. So let's break down some of the most embarrassing AI predictions that age worse than 1999.com business plan. So now, as always, the best compliment you can give me is to leave a comment down below. It's honestly one of my favorite things and the best compliment that you can give me. So I read every single one of these. Now, uh, in, in the 1970s, Mar Marvin Minsky, who was one of the fathers of AI, said that, that we were eight years to AI. And, that, and he was quoting that as an AI disaster. Now, MIT's AI godfather confidently declared that human-level intelligence would arrive between 1978 and 1983. And this was very public. You can go back and read it all. And this was just three to eight years away, according to him. Right Now, Minsky wasn't some random blogger. This guy literally co-founded MIT's AI lab and helped create the field itself. So this is what really started what we have today. But he genuinely believed that once they figured out the basic principles, jumping to general intelligence would be simple and fast. By the early 1980s, AI was still struggling with basic pattern recognition, while Minsky's timeline had completely collapsed. This overly optimistic pr uh, prediction directly contributes to the first AI winter when funding dried up due to unmet expectations. Now, the lesson here should have been learned then. Even the smartest people in the field can be spectacularly wrong about the timeframes. Now, he wasn't wrong about what would happen, but his timeframes were totally off. And that's totally something we're seeing against today. Now, Ray Kurzweil's uh, Singularity Countdown Clock, right? In 1999, futurist Ray Kurzweil predicted that by 2009, AI would achieve recursive self-improvement leading to a technology singularity. And that's what we've been hearing about in the last three years a ton, right? Been hearing the same story over again. And a lot of people got after me saying, oh, you're just an AI hater. I'm like, look, guys, I'm an AI realist because we've heard this game before. He wasn't just talking about better chatbots. This was supposed to be super intelligent AI that could improve itself exponentially. So Kurzweil had a track record of accurate predictions about technology. So investors and researchers took this timeline seriously. But by 2009, we were still using basic search engines and the iPhone had just launched two years earlier, nowhere near AI singularity. So he's quietly pushed his timeline toward multiple times in later works, but never acknowledged how wrong the original prediction was. So this pattern of moving goalposts when prediction fail is becoming a trademark of AI hype cycles. Now, there was also the 30% job apocalypse that never came, right? So a widely circulated report, uh, World Economic Forum report in 2023, predicted that AI would displace 30% of the jobs by 2025, right? That's literally right now. So business, media, and social platforms amplify this prediction, creating massive anxieties about AI replacing entire industries. The report specifically targeted data entry, customer service, and creative roles as being fully automated within two years. Now, as we hit late 2025, Job displacement has been far more gradual with new AI oversight rules actually creating more jobs. Human adaptability and regularity pushed back have slowed adoption much more than WEF, WEF uh, anticipated, right? That was the World Economic Forum. So the prediction fundamentally underestimated how complex it is to actually replace human workers in real business environments. Now, uh, let's go to another one here, right? So in 2022, Dolly uh, 2 launched with impressive and everybody was enthusiastic about it, right? And they predicted that AI would dominate creative by 2024. Now, articles in major publications claimed AI-generated content would be, quote, indistinguishable from human creators, end quote, within two years. 
The hype suggested artists, musicians, and writers were about to be completely replaced by AI. Now, while tools like MidJourney have improved dramatically, they still struggle with basic consistency and emotional depth. So if you want to give a good example, go look at a lot of the hands that are replacing them. Hands are one of the things they really, really, really struggle with. And this doesn't even start to go into the copyright disputes and the lack of true creative understanding that have kept humans firmly in control of creative processes. I have a, a friend who's an artist for Disney. He says that his business is actually picked up. So instead of replacement, we're seeing AI as powerful assistance that can still require significant human oversight and direction. Now, let's drive into one of my favorite ones, self-driving cars, right? So as early as 2015, Elon Musk said that Tesla would be full self-driving, quote, within a couple of years. And then by 2019, it was by the end of the year. And by 2022 and 2023, it would be level, you know, uh, level three autonomous by the end of the year, right? And this was repeated over and over again, right? And Elon Musk repeatedly tweeted that human drivers would be unnecessary by now with cars handling any driving scenario. The prediction assumed that regulatory approval would be automatic once the technology was ready, a massive miscalculation. Now, regulatory is not the only thing it's not ready for, right? I've been a full self-driver uh, FSD user from the very get-go, and it's super impressive. I actually think it's one of the closest things we have to AI right now, but it's still not replacing human drivers. It is seven times more safe than human drivers. So I use it every single day. We have two Teslas. Uh, my wife and I both, you, uh, like it, it drives me everywhere I go. I need one of the bumper stickers that says I'm probably not driving, right? So I'm a big fan of this, but they've missed the timelines again and again. And what the robo taxi has been able to do in the last couple of months has been really impressive. We're still far from replacing this and the timelines are still way off. And as much as I'm an Elon Musk supporter and definitely, and I, and for all those you want to hate on me that for saying that I'm an Elon Musk supporter, like, look, the, the guy has accomplished more than anybody else has, and he is pushing boundaries faster than anybody else right now. So one of the things about it here that's really funny is in the Grok 4 release, Elon Musk humorously said, made these bold predictions about Grok 5 and on and on and where Grok was going to go. And then he stopped and said, but I've actually been notoriously bad at my time estimates and laughed, right? So he even understands that he's missed this. Uh, Andre Kapart uh, Karpathy, who was the, um, for 12 years, was the head of FSD at Tesla, even admitted that this was far more complicated than they uh, anticipated. And this was one thing it was trying to do. This wasn't trying to go to HEI. This was just trying to hit self-driving cars. So we can see that that's complicated. Now, if you've got complicated systems at your company and you need help, reach out to us because our specialty is connecting systems so your company can work to maximum efficiency. Check out startuphack.com slash Spencer because we'd love to help you out. Now, in early 2024, tech leaders predicted that AI agents would autonomously run entire small businesses by the end of 2025. Remember, 2025 was going to be the year of the agents and it was going to take over and the vision included AI handling accounting, marketing, customer service, and strategic decisions with minimal human input. Frameworks for AI agents were getting serious investments based on these promises of business automations. Real world implementations have revealed that AI lacks the contextual understanding needed for complex business decisions. Current AI agents excel at specific tasks but completely fall apart when trying to understand broader business strategies. These are still tools that require extensive human supervision rather than independent business operations. The latest security uh, reports are saying that if you implement AI uh, agents into your systems, like if you try to give them the broad access, that by the time you connect two MCP connectors, the, the, um, the two MCP connectors, your chance of an attack increased by 90%. So we can see that definitely like, you know, this is something that still requires a lot of human intervention. Now here we do a lot of work on uh, building AI into things, but everything we're doing is either one, we're keeping the AI on-prem. So we're building AI servers for people and keeping that data on-prem so that it doesn't run the risk. We also are very, very careful that every single AI interaction with the system is guarded and bounded by RESTful APIs. So it doesn't have access to, you know, things like your production data. Now, in January of 2025, Sam Altman confidently wrote, we are now confident we know how to build a, a AGI on OpenAI's blog. Now, he's since taken that blog down, but as when anything goes on the internet, it's there for forever, right? And so this was January 2025. He'd been telling audience through 2024 that AGI might arrive in 2025 and he even tweeted that AGI 
achieved internally, saying that they had achieved it internally at OpenAI. Now, OpenAI was so confident that they had employees chanting, feel the AGI at company meetings. And I'm totally not making this up, right? By August 2025, Altman completely changed his tune, calling AGI, quote, not a super useful term in a CNBC interview. And that's a direct, direct quote. He changed his tune within six months. He simultaneously admitted that AI is in a bubble and that some investors are going to get, quote, very burned, end quote, by the hype. So this complete reversal is less than eight months shows how unstable these grand predictions are. Now, Dario Armardi uh, from Anthropic, right, talked about his code generation fantasy. And in March of 2025, Anthropic CEO boldly claimed that AI would write 90% of code within three to six months and essentially all code within a year. Now, Armani wasn't hedging his bets. He put specific timelines completely eliminated human programmers from coding. The prediction assumed that complex software architecture and debugging could be fully automated entirely. Now, after 25 years in software development, I can tell you that coding is just one small part of what developers actually do. We approach, as we approach this timeline, AI is helping with coding, but nowhere near replacing strategic thinking and problem solving that developers provide. IBM CEO uh, recently pushed back immediately saying the realistic number is more like 20 to 25%, and that's a much more realistic es estimate. Now, as always, I'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are what are some of your favorite missed AI predictions? Leave a comment down below because it's one of my favorite things. Now, AI companies spent uh, 2023 and 2024 promising full automation would eliminate human oversight entirely. The pitch was simple. AI would handle everything from customer service to legal document reviews with human interventions. Customers rushed to implement lights out AI systems, believing human verification was just temporary friction. Now, reality hit really hard when cost of AI mistakes far exceeded the cost of human reviewing in the critical business process. So we're now seeing a quiet return to human in the loop systems after expensive failures taught companies harsh lessons. The most successful AI implementations enhance human capabilities rather than attempting to complete uh, to completely replace them. And this is what I tell my developers all the time. AI won't replace you, but a developer who knows how to use it might. Now, there's been a lot of other things, and we've seen a ton of other failures along the way, right? But recently, we saw an MIT reality check that burst the bubble, right? And it actually started to impact the stock market. A comprehensive MIT study, study in August of 2025 found that 95% of companies investing in generative AI are seeing no measurable returns. So this wasn't about AI technology just being bad. It was about companies having no idea how to actually implement it effectively. The study attributes failures to, quote, corporate learning gaps and flawed integration strategies rather than technology limitations. So when this report hit the market, tech stocks took over a $1 trillion hit over a week, right, in value, because this was really where we start to see some of the hype hit, right? The gap between impressive demos and actual business values became impossible to ignore. Now, companies discovered that buying AI tools is easy, but getting them plugged into your system and getting measurable business results is a totally different matter. So Silicon Valley went from obsessing over AGI to actively avoiding the term in just a few months during summer of 2025. Even former AGI evangelist Eric Schmidt co-authored New York Times op-ed warning against AGI fixation. AI industry leaders started calling AGI, quote, overhyped after spending years promised that it was going to be just around the corner. The shift happened because investors started demanding actual returns instead of impressive technology demos. So this is what I've been predicting here for over a year and a half on this channel. Companies realized that chasing AGI dreams was distracting them from building profitable, useful AI products and, you know, building real software systems. This represents the most dramatic reversal in AI sentiment since the field began. Now, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts. As always, I'd love to have a great discussion, so make sure to leave a comment down below and make sure to like and subscribe. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps and build custom software solutions for companies. So reach out because we'd love to help. You can check out startuppack.com slash Spencer and here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. 
My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect. Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer.